Hello. So we are continuing the discussion on critical concepts. In this video, we will look at the concept of ambiguity. Again, uh, we are following a glossary of literary terms by M. H. Abrams. So ambiguity. In ordinary usage, ambiguity is applied to a fault in style. That is the use of a vague or equivocal expression when what is wanted is precision and particularity of reference. Ab ambiguity in another critical item, lade, ordinary usage le, in ordinary English, when we say something is ambiguous, we are talk, we, we are saying that something is vague, something is confusing, not quite clear. And writer ambiguous aana. There is ambiguity in his writings. In the variable, it is as if we are talking about a fault style. A literary style is a problem or a fault style. Ambiguity is a problem. Which means that what is needed, what is wanted is precision and particularity of reference. We have to say that precise aite krithyamayi karyangala parayana particularity vegalla particular aite ulla karyangal krithyamayi parayanana aavashyam pakshe aa author cheyidirikkunathu valare vague aite allengil equivocal equivocal means not taking a stand not saying it is this or that adano idano ennu parayade krithyamayite or karyam parayade valare vague aayi confusing aaya reethiyile karyangal express cheya adinana sadharana reethiyile nammal ambiguity ennu parayanathu angane oru sadharana usage il ambiguity or a fault in style honor but uh, in criticism especially in new criticism ambiguity has a completely different uh, meaning to it. it 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 is actually considered an element of literary style literary style in the another literary device site than yana ambiguity in a new critics of and uh, the person who is most responsible for uh, foregrounding ambiguity as a literary device is uh, the critic William Empson since William Empson published seven types of ambiguity in 1930 however the term has been widely used in criticism to, to identify a deliberate poetic device, the use of a single word or expression to signify two or more distinct references or to express two or more diverse attitudes or feelings. In 1930, William Empson, who was a new critic, published this book called Seven Types of Ambiguity, where he describes ambiguity as a po poetic device, as a literary device, and he also talks about different types of ambiguity, seven types on Emson Parayanada. On the model, from that point onwards, ambiguity, the term ambiguity, is has been widely used in criticism as a poetic device. In the poetic device, the ambiguity in the meaning is slightly different. Or a single word, a language or expression, or which one day, two or more distinct meanings, or two or more distinct references, or two or more diverse attitudes or feelings. Either all express cheyan patchan da dinya na mal ambiguity da parapu. Or a word, pakshe adil or a meaningum maybe adil the opposite meaning. Alay maybe adu mai bandh mella thori meaningum adil word dil tanne adangir ke. We will come to an example in a moment, but adha ana ambiguity as a uh, critical concept ambiguity as a literary device on the parimbo adana meaning up sadar and elekia krithyamai paraya the way guy parinu in a lot of fault on ambiguity angle according to new critics especially uh, from the time of william emson's seven types of ambiguity onwards ambiguity in the varna it is the use of a word to convey multiple meanings uh, so words like multiple meaning and plurisignation are alternative terms for the use of, for this kind of use of language. In the one, Nana, they have the advantage of avoiding the pejorative association. Pejorative means negative association with the word ambiguity. If you use ambiguity in the use, it is a negative term. It is a negative Ambiguity, vagueness, confusion, and that is ambiguity in the term you use. Even though Emson rework that term uh, to uh, signify a poetic device uh, some other critics prefer not to use ambiguity as a literary device rather they use the words multiple meaning and plurisignation plurisignation means 
plural ennalla inde pluri and signation for you know sign signification ennalla again meaning making ennalla artham appo uh, one word can have multiple meanings or a plurality of meanings ennalla a meaning ilana nammal ambiguity ne use cheyunnathu adin or example ay parayunnathu in shakespeare's antony and cleopatra there is a scene where cleopatra the queen of egypt she was in love with mark antony who was a, a kind of a regent who was sent by the roman emperor octavius caesar and uh, cleopatra and antony fall in love and they defy the conventions of their their nations cleopatra as a queen of egypt and uh, antony was the a representative of the roman emperor and they were not supposed to fall in love antony was supposed to conquer egypt and uh, you know displace cleopatra but they fell in love and at the end of the play it's also a tragedy by shakespeare at the end of the play uh, antony is defeated and killed and uh, the roman emperor octavius caesar is coming to egypt he is entering egypt as a victor in order to conquer egypt and cleopatra knows that she will have to bow down to octavius she may be humiliated she may be imprisoned all sorts of things can happen and so she decides to commit suicide appo angane cleopatra suicide cheyna or scene and it is a very important scene in that play so what she does is she takes a poisonous insect called an asp asp enna perulla or poisonous insect ne eduthittu she is asking that asp to bite her so she places the asp on her breast just as if it is a baby that she is going to feed and then she asks the asp to bite her and kill her with its poison a scene aanu ipo ivada or example ay eduthirikkunnathu and these are the lines that cleopatra speaks come thou mortal wretch with thy sharp teeth this not intrinsic at of life at once untie poor venomous fool be angry and dispatch come thou mortal wretch so she is addressing the asp and calling it a mortal wretch so in this speech her speech is richly multiple in significance so shakespeare has uh, consciously used certain words which have more than one meaning for example mortal the word mortal she is calling the asp mortal wretch and mortal can have two meanings it can mean fatal or death dealing that is one meaning and at the same time it may signify that the asp is itself mortal or subject to death so the there is also a, the you know there are many uh, venomous poisonous creatures that uh, bite you and at the same time they may also die so like that the asp is uh, mortal in two different ways one it is mortal because it will die just like all other creatures it is also subject to the cycle of life and death at the same time mortal has another meaning which means something that is so fatal so uh, you know dangerous that it can actually cause death in another person aa rendu meaningum ivide adangittunde so the word mortal in that uh, expression thou mortal wretch is an example of ambiguity then again wretch the word wretch in this context serves to express both contempt and pity cleopatra goes on to refer to the asp as my baby at my breast that sucks the nurse asleep so wretch ennala vaakku veikkumbo wretch ennaladine contempt und you wretch enna oru aalu ore deshathil puchathodu kodum venengil namukku parayam at the same time you say when you say the wretched the wretched of the earth and the parayum bo you are uh, talking about somebody with a lot of pity with a lot of sympathy so the use of the content so cleopatra was contemptuous of the asp because it is a small creature uh, at the same time she also is a little is fond of it she feels pity for it She, she doesn't have any negative feelings for it because that asp is almost like her own baby that's what she says that when i apply this asp to my breast it will be like a baby that is uh, you know suckling the uh, milk from the person who is nursing it and causing that person to fall asleep so even though it is a suicide she is giving it a very maternal 
uh, feeling and that is enhanced by the use of this word wretch which has both these meanings and then and the two meanings of dispatch are equally relevant dispatch be angry and dispatch enana a aspinodu parayunathu dispatch nalla vaakine rendu meaning undu it can mean make haste dispatch ana be hurry up be hasty ennalla oru meaning undu and to dispatch someone can also mean to kill someone anatha shakespeare da kalathu dispatch can mean to kill someone so both these meanings are also relevant here when cleopatra tells the asp to dispatch she is saying kill me kill me quickly be quick and kill me i don't have time i don't want to be uh, taken prisoner by octavius caesar rather i want you to kill me and kill me very quickly so both meanings are in this term so these are all examples of ambiguity now a special type of multiple meaning is conveyed by the portmanteau word where oru type word aanu portmanteau word ennu parayana adu nammal the word formation padichappo fifth sem la word formation padichappo ningal padichittunde portmanteau word ennalladhu these are words where uh, these are actually uh, you know words which nammal smog enakke parayana polthe words aanu where you know half of one word and half of another word are combined to form a new word now this see that kind of multiple meaning because it conveys the meaning of both words rendu uh, words inde combination ana rendu word indeyum meanings adil adangirikkunnundu the term was introduced into literary criticism by humpty dumpty the expert on semantics in lewis carroll's book through the looking glass published in 1871 appa alice in wonderland ezhude lewis carroll de adu alice in wonderland de sequel aaya through the looking glass alice through the looking glass ennu parayna aa book il humpty dumpty ennu parana oru character undu he he is shaped like a huge egg and he and alice have a conversation where humpty dumpty speaks like a big intellectual ayalu oru velli literary critic ne pole ayalu parayana and he is explicating to alice the meaning of the opening lines of a, a nonsense poem written by carroll called ജാബോക്കി ജാബോക്കി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഒരു വലിയൊരു പോയം ഉണ്ട് എന്നൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് ആലിസിനോട് പറഞ്ഞു കൊടുക്കുകയാണ് പക്ഷെ അത് കേൾക്കുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് അറിയാം അതൊരു നോൺസെൻസ് പോയമാണ് ആൻഡ് അതിന്റെ മീനിങ് ഇങ്ങനെ വലിയ കാര്യമായിട്ട് ആലിസിന് പറഞ്ഞു കൊടുക്കുകയാണ് ഹംപ്റ്റി ഡംപ്റ്റി ചെയ്യുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ദീസ് ആർ ദ ഓപ്പണിംഗ് ലൈൻസ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ബ്രിലിഗ് ആൻഡ് സ്ലൈ ദി ടോസ് ദി ജായർ ആൻഡ് ഗിംബിൾ ഇൻ ദി വേബ് ഓൾ ദീസ് വേർഡ്സ് ഡോൺ മീൻ എനിത്തിങ് ബ്രിലിഗ് സ്ലൈ ദി ടോസ് ജായർ ഗിംബിൾ വേബ് ഇതിനൊക്കെ മീനിങ് എന്താണെന്ന് ആർക്കും അറിയില്ല വെറുതെ ഒരു നോൺസെൻസിക്കൽ പോയം ആണ് ബട്ട് ഹംപ്റ്റി ഡംപ്റ്റി ഈസ് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിനിങ് ഇറ്റ് ആലസ് ആസ് എഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് സം ഗ്രേറ്റ് എപ്പിക് പോയം ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഹി എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ വേർഡ്സ് സ്ലൈ ദി സ്ലൈ ദി ഹംപ്റ്റി ഡംപ്റ്റി എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ മീൻസ് ലൈ ആൻഡ് സ്ലൈ മീ യു സി ഇറ്റ്സ് ലൈക്ക് എ പോർട്ട്മാൻറ്റോ ദർ ആർ ടു മീനിങ്സ് പാക്ഡ് അപ്പ് ഇൻ ടു വൺ വേർഡ് പോർട്ട്മാൻറ്റോ ഇസ് ലൈക്ക് ഒരു കബേർഡ് പോലത്തെ ഒരു സംഭവമാണ് അപ്പൊ ആ ഒരു വാക്കിനകത്ത് നമുക്ക് രണ്ട് മീനിങ്സിനെ പാക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും ലൈത്ത് ലൈത്ത് ആൻഡ് സ്ലൈമി എന്നുള്ള ഈ ടു വേർഡ്സ് ചേർന്നതാണ് സ്ലൈതി എന്ന് അവിടെ അവിടെ പറയുന്നുണ്ട് അവിടെന്നാണ് ഈ പോർട്ട്മാൻറ്റോ വേർഡ് എന്നുള്ള യൂസേജ് വരുന്നത് ബിക്കോസ് അംടി ഡംടി യൂസസ് ദ വേർഡ് പോർട്ട്മാൻറ്റോ ബട്ട് യുനോ serious literary scholars and uh, writers have also used this uh, term and they have also used portmanteau words as a literary device one example is the irish writer james joyce mo- great modernist writer james joyce that is the fusion of two or more existing words in order to sustain the multiple levels of meaning throughout his long dream narrative finnegans wake up finnegans wake ennu parna ജോയ്സിന്റെ ഒരു ലോങ് നാരറ്റീവ് ഒരു ലോങ് നോവലുണ്ട് സ്ഥലത്തും ഇയാൾ ഇതുപോലെയുള്ള പോർട്ട്മാൻറ്റോ വേർഡ്സ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് എൻ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഇസ് ഇസ് കമൻറ്റ് ഓൺ ഗേൾസ് ഹു ആർ യങ് ആൻഡ് ഈസിലി ഫ്രോയിഡൻറ്റ് വേർ ഫ്രോയിഡൻറ്റ് കമ്പൈൻസ് ഫ്രൈറ്റൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫ്രോയിഡ് സിഗ്മൺ ഫ്രോയിഡ് father of psychoanalysis while young y u n g sadharana young is y o u n g aanu but young uh, with y u n g ennalla spelling aayittla young combines young and sigmund freud 
So uh, when uh, he talks about joy, he talks about girls who are young and easily frightened. On the other hand, they are easily frightened. At the same time, he is uh, drawing some questions. He is making some references to these rival psychologists, Jung and Freud. Why are these girls young and frightened? the psychoanalytic reasons We immediately think about the theories of Freud, which have a lot to do with sexuality. We think about the uh, concepts generally of psychoanalysis. just by using these words, young and easily Freudian. Then another example for such portmanteau words is difference, which you have again studied in your uh, fifth semester while studying uh, post-structuralism and deconstruction. Difference, a key analytic term of the philosopher of language, Jacques Derrida, is a portmanteau noun, which he describes as combining two diverse meanings of the French word differer. And then are two diverse meanings to differ and to defer. To differ, onna onnel denna vetyastam auga ennala differ ennala meaningum. To defer, neeti vekuga, postpone cheyga ennala i rand meaningum gudi chayarth. A rand meaningum French verb ayya differer ennala auga akilende. Differ cheyuga, defer cheyga. Rando mande. Adha rando gudi chayar na difference ennu pari na oru term na mande derida coin cheydu. In order to talk about how language works, how meaning is conveyed through language, and according to uh, Saussure, meaning is the result of difference, difference from other terms. But Derrida says meaning is not just a re result of difference, it is also the result of deference. Meaning is eternally postponed. It is study study of the fifth semester. It is the same thing. It is the difference in the word. It is the portmanteau word. It is the same 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 word. James Joyce's example is Yum, Y-U-N-G. One word is the meaning. It is the words Y-O-U-N-G, Yum, and all of uh, Carl Jung and Jung in the Varanadam random Kudi combined Chayana Chayana. It could be in any of these ways. Portmanteau words can be in any of these ways. And portmanteau words are just one example of what we call ambiguity. Ambiguity Pala Varathalanda Longa Matramana portmanteau words. William Emerson, who in analyzing poetic ambiguity, named and enlarged upon a literary phenomenon that had been noted by some earlier critics, helped make current a mode of explication developed especially by exponents of the new criticism, which greatly expanded the awareness by readers of the complexity and richness of poetic language about what is the uh, benefit of you know, using this term ambiguity as a poetic device, as a literary device. That's why we are new critics in the new criticism in the Parayana model. Uh, study the critics, uh, either eight to the current, or a literary phenomenon 